anyone not find a name on the list or did not check the list? Yes, yes, you are. Um, they're here. So this is what we're talking about now. And if you just go to Hemaldex and you go to materials, you go into uh, this is the course name and materials, and then it's under the lecture notes. So I could just go back. That was under lectures. Okay. And that was here. And that was here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, Chapter 5 and Chapter 6 organization systems and labeling systems. <coughs> um, they start out with saying that there's a lot of different ways to organize uh, information. Uh, librarians have been doing it for ages, uh, but more recently we have internet and there's a lot more information <coughs> out there. So there's different ways of organizing how people represent information. So some of the big challenges of this is um, <coughs> ambiguity. Uh, well, information growth, since we have internet, there's a lot of uh, content creation by end users, whereas before most information was uh, produced through very formal systems like publishing and you had to, if you publish a book, then many people would read the book. So if you look in a, in a library, <coughs> the, the information didn't grow so quickly, but on the internet, people are creating content all the time, so there's a lot more stuff to go through. And then <coughs> ambiguity, this has to do with <coughs> a lot to do with languages. And um, if I look here on, on Pinterest, if I search on the term uh, fencing, I get uh, some pictures that are about fences and other that is about the sport of fencing. So you can see that the word, uh, even though it's the same spelling, can have many different meanings. Um, and so there's different ways that people try to uh, search for information, but basically if you introduce language into it, which is most, most types of organization systems have to do with language, then you might have some ambiguity involved. <coughs> Another problem is heterogeneity, and that is that there's uh, different sizes of chunks of information that are composing of information content or the record. So <coughs> before you might have had books in a library and if you look through a card system in the library you'd find the book. But on the internet there's all different sizes of information. It can be a, it can be a, um, a video on YouTube, it can be a tweet or a message on, on Twitter, uh, it can be a sound clip, it can be an image on uh, Pinterest, it could be a piece of text on a web page. So there's all different types of information and there's different sizes of information. So it's hard to identify um, one system that will help you find everything. And then there's differences in perspective. And this is <coughs> what people are really working on the most is how do you know who's going to use your your site and and they have different types of backgrounds and different interests. So if I'm <coughs> creating a, a a website for for e-commerce like eBay, um, I'm I have to <coughs> accommodate all different types of users and perspectives. And these people might that are using my website, they might have different languages as their native language, or they might have different types of knowledge about a subject. So somebody searching for <coughs> um, skateboards that knows about skateboards would search for that differently than somebody that uh, doesn't have any previous knowledge about it. 
So you have different kinds of vocabularies that are accepted vocabularies. Or if I'm searching about a health topic, if I'm somebody that is a medical professional, maybe I know different words to search on than somebody that's a lay person. So it depends on who's your intended audience, who's going to use the, the, the site. And then uh, internal politics, uh, there may be different ways of labeling things. So if you have, like the school has a, a web page and they have one that's for the students and one that's for the employees. And uh, there's different ways of uh, what are the official terms that you're supposed to use for each, each uh, position or so forth. So the, sometimes politics plays a role. But most, mostly the, one of the biggest challenges is who is the intended audience? <coughs> this is just a picture that's in the book that shows about information growth and that there, are different, there have been different ways of uh, finding information. So uh, the first one is, um, you know, like, like things on tablets and or uh, very few printed uh, books on scrolls or books and different types of um, um, ways of searching for that. And later on coming up with a, like a structured markup language to help you to find information that is online and um, information architects arrive with the explosion of information in the internet. Uh, this is another pointing out that uh, of ambiguity of languages that a single word can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. So they use the example of pitch and it has a lot of different uh, definitions. So, um, <coughs> Okay, so there's some of the important um, things we talk about in this chapter are what is an organization's schemes and what are structures. So schemes are, uh, these are ways of logically grouping information. So if I have um, ice cream uh, that's being sold on a dessert site, uh, that's uh, I'm grouping all of the desserts that are ice cream under ice cream. And if I'm dessert, I'm grouping cupcakes under cupcakes. So it's different ways of grouping information. <coughs> and then structure is the relationship between uh, the groups and the content. So this is <coughs> how do you create um, a, a, a linking or a navigation system that links you uh, between uh, the different types of groups of information. So organization is also tied to navigation, labeling, and indexing. <coughs> and even so, it says working with organizations separately is useful, possibly making it a fundament for navigation and labeling. Um, okay. The first part of the chapter talks about organization schemes. And this, um, if an organization scheme can be a well-defined or an exact organization scheme. Uh, the well-defined organization schemes are usually used in known item searching. So when we had this example of different types of searching types, we had known item searching, we knew what we were looking for. It usually uses the exact organization scheme. And um, this is where you don't want, you want no ambiguity involved. You know the name of something and then that's what you're searching for. So you usually group things into mutually exclusive categories, meaning that uh, if something is in one category, it can't be in another category. It's independent and exclusive. So if I, if I want to search for tulips, I'm not going to find tulips under um, tomatoes, okay? So it's like two different things. And <coughs> organization schemes that make use of uh, alphabetical listings 
or chronological order or geographical separation. These are exact schemes when you know exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for a name and then you find that name. So an example of an alphabetical listing would be in, um, well, they, they have it on page 60 in your book, 